Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, in this situation with the veteran's benefit, Frank and Mary have an income of $36,000. The VA benefit generates $2,000 a month or $24,000. The burn rate on their remaining money now is only $24,000 per year, which means if you take their $300,000 and divide by that $24,000, they can make it in assisted living for 12.5 years. That's a long time. But suppose that that's still just stressing Mary and Frank out too much. Suppose they're 80 years old and they just say to themselves, we cannot afford to be running out of money. Well, of course, they still own that house. Remember, in this case, they still own the house that's worth $600,000. So what if they took an equity loan out on the house for half the value, $300,000? And they didn't grab all the money necessarily right away, right? Suppose they just took an equity loan out and they just said, well, we're just going to pull out for ourselves the amount that we're going to need in order to continue to live comfortably um, using that equity loan. So in that case, um, what, what, you, what you end up having is a pot of money, instead of being, ha having a pot of money that's worth $300,000, which is their cash, now you have a pot that's worth $600,000 because now they have this equity loan money that is available. Now I'm assuming that they're not going to need any of the money from that equity loan to pay back to the bank while they're alive because I'm assuming that the equity loan is going to be such that the rent that would be generated by their house is going to be enough to pay that equity loan. And that, rent, and that mortgage payment, by the way, for VA purposes would be a legitimate house expense. So, the, so it, it would not be that they would need to, on the one hand, declare that money as income for VA purposes but then have to pay the mortgage. No, they could subtract the mortgage payments, which means as far as VA was concerned, there wouldn't be income coming from the house. Well, if that's the case, and they only need $24,000 a year, that's the burn rate on their money, and they've got $600,000, that means that Frank and Mary, who we're assuming are about 75 or 80 years old, can stay in assisted living for 25 more years until they reach either 100 or 105. I would say, as far as Frank and Mary are concerned, that's probably safe. But now let's talk about one other possibility. <clears throat> using the tax code. Using the tax code. This is something that, that Frank and Mary t would tend to not think about because Frank and Mary during their lifetimes were never in a high income tax bracket where they were trying to figure out tax deductions and all this stuff to try to reduce the amount of their taxes. Um, but, but Peter is in that kind of bracket. As we mentioned, Peter is in New York, and Peter and his wife are doing very well. Um, so they are in a very high tax bracket. Uh, and as a matter of fact, and so I'm just going to, and, 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 the, and the reason why I'm kind of talking about this is, if, if you are in an assisted living facility and you need assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living. And we talked about what those activities of daily living are. This is the same standard as the standard for the VA benefit. If you need assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living, and by the way, this needs to be certi certified by a health care professional. It does not have to be a doctor. It can be a nurse, registered nurse, but it has to be a health care professional. If you do, then the, uh, the uh, and if the assistance that is being provided is part of the, the care package, the, the ISP, the, the individual service plan that Chuck had talked about, then the cost of assisted, assisted living is a medical deduction. 100% of the cost of the assisted living is a medical deduction, right? So, and, and remember that $6,000 uh, a month, so the total medical deduction is $72,000. $72,000. Now, that's not really significant if you're Frank and Mary because what do they need a tax deduction for? They're living on Social Security and a pension. They're probably not paying any taxes right now. However, suppose they gave their money to Peter. Could Peter use a tax deduction? Would that result in any savings? Well, uh, if Peter is earning three, is Peter and his wife together are earning a substantial income. And of course, this is a very substantial income, but this works even if they're making quite a bit less than that. But I'm using this as the example. 
If Peter and his wife living in New York were earning $300,000, the New York income tax rate on that is 6.65%, which we're going to round to 7. The federal income tax on that is 33%, which means the total income tax that they, would be, that they, would, they are paying on, on all of their dollars at that amount of money is 40%. 40%. So, suppose Frank and Mary became dependents of Peter. Well, how could that be? I mean, they're the parents. How can they be dependents? Well, the federal definition of dependency for income tax purposes, and the states all follow the same federal rule, is that, the, is that if you are providing more than 50% of the support of any individual, any individual, can be your parents, can be your kids, can be someone living down the street, then um, they can be declared as your dependent. They can be declared as your dependent. Um, so in this case, where Frank and Mary's total income is only $36,000, if, if, if Peter and his wife are, are helping by giving to Frank and Mary at least $36,001 per year, Frank and Mary are their dependents, which means that the money that they're paying on Frank and Mary's behalf is a medical deduction of Peter and Paul's, or excuse me, of Peter and his wife. If they were to be, if they had $600,000 that they were giving their, that, that Peter was giving his parents, remember those $600,000 that, that, that Frank and Mary were going to be using to pay for the assisted living, right? If instead they gave it to Peter, they gave him $600,000, and he used that money over these number of years to help support his parents, right, by paying for the assisted living, then he would have a legitimate uh, income tax deduction equal to 40% of that amount of money. 40% of $600,000 is $240,000. If, if he decided, because he was a generous son, and of course this would only work if you trust your son, right, um, if he decided to take that money, which he just saved, this was money that, that, was, that, that he got to, to subtract from his taxes, right? That he just saved uh, and add that to the pot of money that was available for his parents, then that pot would go up by that $240,000. And what Frank and Mary would have available would be $840,000 to pay for assisted living. How long would that last? Remember, assisted living is $72,000, fun is $12,000 for a total of eighty-four. dollars Remember that their burn rate, because I'm, in this example, I'm assuming that there is, there is not even a veteran's benefit. I'm assuming that Frank is not a veteran and there's no veteran's benefit. In this example, that $840,000 will be depleted over 17.5 years. So in this example, Frank and Mary kept their house, they got an equity loan against it for, for half the value, for $300,000, right? They took that money together with their savings and gave it to Peter. And Peter, in turn, used it to pay the assisted living bills for Frank and Mary for as long as they lived. And I'm assuming that 17.5 years is a comfortable length of time for Frank and Mary to feel they're going to be okay. Because if they're 80 years old, that means those 17.5 years are going to be good until Frank and Mary are 97.5. So I guess I'm just I'm suggesting to you that there, if there comes a time when on the personal side, on the medical side, you just feel like we just can't be living at home. It's not safe for us to be living at home anymore. It's too dangerous. If we fall, we're going to get stuck in that nursing home. And remember, that's the last thing that Mary or Frank ever wanted, was getting stuck in a nursing home. If you feel that for safety's sake, because you're nervous about, oh, Mary really shouldn't be preparing meals right now, you know, she's got kind of early stage dementia, we can't afford to not have the stove get shut off. You know, there are, if, if, if for any of those reasons you think that's really the correct answer, but you're saying to yourself, oh my God, we just can't afford it. Well, think about some of these tools. Think about some of these tools. It may very well be that you can manage to be in assisted living for a long time. You could even be at Sherman Commons. Thank you very much. 
Uh, and I'm going to take questions. And by the way, I, I, I appreciate the fact that these, this will be broadcast on cable. I'm going to be taking any questions but uh, after the cable show so that we're just kind of making sure that the educational portion of this program is all in there. I really want to thank Chuck Gifford mm -hmm. for being with me here today and for his kindness in letting me come to Sherbin Commons. Uh, I, we've been talking about doing some follow-up shows to this. Uh, we're, we're thinking about doing one on Social Security and on several other topics. We hope to be seeing you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>